All right, we're now going to take a closer look at the Curves tool to see how we can use it in place of multiple tools. So we're going to jump back into Darktable here with the same image as before to see what kind of results we can get with the tone curve. So again, in color grading, just below levels, we have our tone curve. So it's a little harder to determine where the white and black points are, but they are in the corners here on this linear line. This is the black point. This is the white point. Now, as far as moving the white point to the edge of the histogram, well, to fill in this gap, we need to move this to the left. And now that aligns with the histogram right here. I think that's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this back a little bit. And then for the black point, we can drag that to the edge of the histogram right here. Let's go ahead and turn our indicator back on if you don't have it on. And again, we're losing detail in the bushes, but we're not really going to see that detail in there anyway because that detail or that those elements, I should say, are pretty small. All right, so we now have our white and black point set. Our histogram is now showing a larger tonal range. And we have pretty much the same result as before. But now I can add contrast with the tone curve by applying an S curve. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the blacks and the shadows down and take the whites and the highlights and drag those up. And now we have more contrast than we did before. And you're going to adjust this based on your creative vision. I love it. I like that right there. You may think it's too much or maybe not enough. That's entirely up to you. I just recommend not overdoing it and start clipping too much detail. So I'm happy with these settings right here because I'm not really losing any detail other than these small bushes in the foreground. Now I can take it even a step further and adjust the exposure by dragging in the middle here where the mid-tones are and then dragging that up to brighten up or darken the image. So you can make that type of decision based on what you prefer. So maybe a little bit brighter is better for this particular image. I'm not sure. What do you think? So I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at another image and see how we would apply the tone curve in the same manner with what you've learned so far. So the first thing we do is, that's right, we take a look at the histogram and we can see that there's no gap on the left side. So the blacks and the shadows are pretty good, even though the indicator is saying we are losing detail in that part of the image. That's okay. Again, these parts of the image are not that important, but as we make adjustments to the right side, which are the whites and the highlights, it will brighten up the shadows and bring back some of that detail. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab my white point here and drag it to the left. Now, if I go all the way to the edge, I think that's too bright. It's a little hot. Plus, I'm losing a little detail in the sky here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back to the right until I find a setting that I think looks good. So I think right about there. And now we're losing less detail in these parts of the image where that blue overlay is compared to the image straight out of camera. So it's brightening up that part of the tonal range, which is what we want. So we're losing less detail. But I may want to do an S curve, which is going to lose more detail on that side. But again, I'm OK with that. But I'm going to brighten up the highlights as well because I want to add some contrast to this image. And I may drag this up a little bit more. And now we definitely have more contrast than we did before. So it's brighter and sharper and has more contrast. So the contrast adds a little bit of sharpness to it as well because it's defining the edges a little bit better based on the contrast between the tree and the sky. And again, what do you want to do? Do you want to increase the brightness level? or darken it up in the midtones. So how do you want to change the exposure or do you want to change the exposure? If not, just double click here and it's going to reset everything. But if I use command or control plus the letter Z, it's going to take me back because maybe I just want to get rid of just one anchor point and not reset it completely. And you can do that by right clicking on that anchor point to reset it. All right, back in GIMP and let's take a look at curves from here. So colors, curves, and pretty much the same thing as before. So it all depends on if you're working with a JPEG file or a raw file. I would definitely recommend raw over JPEG because it's going to retain more information, more detail than a JPEG file. You can kind of see that this image now is starting to get pixelated 
because it is a lower quality image as a JPEG file compared to the raw file. So go ahead and play around with both your JPEG and raw file to see this for yourself and go ahead and practice with the tone curve as well. All right, so that's it for the tone curve. In the next tutorial, I have another type of editing technique that can help you elevate your photographic editing skills and it's called dodge and burn. So let's check that out.